Tomasz Worek. We're here at the EWA6 event and a great many areas relating to water policy are being discussed. The areas that you deal with most yourself relate to sustainability, agriculture, those kinds of areas. Could you tell us where the EU policies is, policy is at the moment? Um, we are in fact uh, facing a revision of the carbon agriculture policy at Europe, which um, is going into a direction which is going, I think, going to be more environmental friendly, because uh, there is a huge demand from society not to pay any longer for just for food production, and uh, the big question is to which extent will this be implemented? Uh, because the farmers uh, still have a strong lobby and do not want to change the full system. I mean, there are some groups which are which are also heading for environmental services payments. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in progress in fact, so. but I think it's getting, going to be more greener in the future. Mm. We, uh, something that we hear a lot of in the EU policy circles is that the agricultural area is going to be much more ecologically friendly. Yeah. How long do you think it's going to take for this to really work its way through from here to, through to legislation and then implementation for the actual fields and land around Europe? Well, I think, I mean, uh, the reform will be, has to be finalized by 2013. So, uh, I mean, pr preparing the political ground uh, is another three years to go. But uh, not all legislation that is, imp well, that is put on the table is finally implemented. And uh, it's, it's the big question is how farmers will react at the end of the day. And uh, this is, I mean, strongly related to the financial reform of the, C uh, of, of, of the European mm -hmm. Union, in fact, not only of the CAP. Um, and I think, I mean, uh, farming is, is a lifetime job, so uh, probably it will take two, three generations to, to change behavior of farmers uh, in Europe and in some places where the money is sufficient and farming is more like seen as an industrial business, uh, it might go f much faster. Yeah. The, the, the kind of changes, and I'm speaking more broadly here relating to climate change, energy efficiency legislation, that are being uh, brought into effect at the moment, many businesses and many industries seem to take this as a, as a challenge. Is it a challenge or is it an opportunity? I think it's both. It's uh, either de depending on uh, where you are in Europe. I mean, in the south, it's it's more a challenge. In in the north, I think it's it's really an opportunity. And from a business point of view, um, I mean, there's room for a lot of technological development, which is a opportunity for for Europe to sell it across the world. So I think it's both. And um, I think that uh, we have to investigate a bit more on, on what are the challenges and what are the opportunities, not on the European scale, really more on the local scale, because it's, it's so differently across Europe and, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the big challenges that we all face, isn't it? Because on the one hand, we're waiting for leaders to come to a binding agreement relating to climate change that the rest of us will have yeah. to, to come into line with. But ultimately, it's people, you and I, man yeah. on the streets, yeah. the people that work farms that actually have to implement things. It's going to take time for that to really, really take effect, isn't it? Uh, it will, it will, it will. And uh, in fact, it's also, um, I mean, we are we are still not really changing our way of behavior. I mean, we are talking about resource efficiency and all these nice things, but uh, in fact, no one has touched the, the hot issue of uh, reducing demand or reducing things. And uh, we are trying to do it with more efficiency at the moment, which is fine. But in the long term, it, it's not going to, to bring us the results we need, I think, personally. Mm. And um, I mean, uh, when, when being in Brussels, quite often, when I look, for example, at the amount of meetings I have and which of them you could do by video conferencing, saving the CO2 emissions for the flight here, but uh, you are required to be here. So, I mean, this is, this is the, the changes we, we want to have on the daily life do not appear. And this is not only, well, this is going across all business. I mean, also the like, uh, people say um, we have health problem because people being overweight and, and so on. But we, we don't train them to eat less. So agricultural production keeps going, 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 we eat more and more, we have all the methane emissions and so on, so it's uh, still not uh, in the brains that this change uh, to combat climate change or to adapt to climate change has to be more significant than what we do now. Okay, one final question then. This is the, as I mentioned earlier, the sixth annual event of the European Water Association. What sort of benefits do you think the EWA brings to EU policy? Um, 
I think one of the good things is that you really get an exchange across Europe that is more informal than the normal Commission's uh, member states meetings. Um, at least what the, the presentations I've seen here are a bit more open than if you are in the room with the Commission having more the compliance check approach. Uh, and the other thing is um, probably the ideas brought up here will are taken home and then uh, people think, okay, if they can do it, we probably can try it as well. And you think kind of a best practice? Uh, not always about best practice. It's more about uh, changing uh, thinking of how uh, problems are approached. It's, it's not always, uh, I, I, don't, I don't like the word best practice when it comes to river basin management plans because, or river management, yeah, managing rivers in fact, because it's uh, so... So those local differences, so many local differences, uh, but I think the, the way of how problems are approached, because the problems are the same across Europe, the impacts of the problems are different. Um, the, I think that is the real benefit that you get this exchange of ideas. How has this country done it? How has this river basin done it? And uh, I think that's, that's one of the good things about here.